Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I hope you're all keeping very well and painting beautiful pictures out there, paintings. This week I'm going to paint um, a nice easy subject. It may look complicated but it's quite easy. Um, a little sunset sort of a scene with uh, boats um, anchored just on the lake. Uh, very calm, very subtle, just using a few colours. So. I suppose you could call this perhaps a tonal kind of a painting, um, lots of yellows and rich browns. Uh, so just a few colours um, will make it nice and easy for you to follow, um, but very, very dramatic results and uh, a couple of nice techniques here that you might try. So I'm looking forward to painting this for you. Um, do join me. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit it now. Hit the bell so you don't miss any future tutorials. Um, so let's go, go and have a bit of fun with this and get some colour on the canvas. Do try to follow me along if you want. It's going to be quite easy. Uh, nice simple scene. A little bit of detail towards the end with the boats, but a nice pleasant scene for you to try. Okay, my friends, let's go and paint this. Have a bit of fun. Okay, let's go. Let's have a bit of fun with this painting. Um, there's a reference photograph. Lovely, simple scene. It looks complicated, but it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm going to try and simplify it for you. Um, I have only a few colours, really. Um, I might not even need all of these colours, but it's nice to have one or two extra in case you need them. I have titanium white, cadmium yellow pale, Naples yellow, magenta, burnt cyana, burnt umber, lamp black and phthalo blue. Um, there we go. Nice, simple, nice, simple palette. As you can see, there's just lots of yellow. It's lots of yellow and a bit of orange, um, a little bit of shady colour for the distance, and just a simple dark colour for the boats. Nice and simple. Let's just try and create a nice scene. What I could have done with this, photo, with this canvas is I could have tinted the canvas with a light coat of burnt cyana, you could do that as well to have a nice base. But up here, I just like the freshness and the whiteness of the canvas for these bright colours. Um, I'm not a huge fan of tinting canvases. In some circumstances, I will tint the canvas, but uh, more for the most part, I like to work on a white canvas. It just keeps the colours fresh. So here we go. Let's take a large brush. Let's dampen the brush. And I'm going to start with a soft colour. Um, looking at the photograph, I don't know if you can kind of make it out. It's a very soft mauve, kind of a mauve going into a yellow, that kind of a feeling. It's a difficult colour to describe, isn't it? It's just a very soft colour. Let's take some phthalo blue to begin with and some white. Okay, thin that out now, make it nice and creamy. Let's take some magenta into that. And I'm going to keep this now soft. Once you have that kind of a pinky, mauve shade, then I'm going to add some Naples yellow. And that Naples yellow now will soften this and give me that kind of a soft shade that I'm looking for. I don't know if you can see that already. Let me just have a look. I'm going to put a touch more magenta into this, just to warm it ever so slightly, and a touch more Naples yellow. Look, you don't have to be fussy with this. You can make, make whatever, whatever colour you like. I'm going to go for this sort of soft, pinky kind of a shade. There's a bit of a, you see the bit of a blue coming off of the brush there. Look, that's absolutely fine. Let's just soften it all in. <clears throat> I'm not going all the way. It goes into a yellow. All down here is more of a yellow. So I'm being very careful now, just a little bit up on this corner, like that. And as it comes down, I'm going to dry my brush on my tissue just to get rid of that colour, most of the colour. As it comes down, I'm going to start adding more pink and a little more Naples yellow into that. And even some white as well. So it's getting lighter and warmer as it comes down. Naples yellow and magenta, probably my favourite mix. And you just get this wonderful warm kind of a shade. It's a lovely sunset shade. A little bit more Naples yellow. And for me, this painting really is all about adding colours as you paint. Now, you probably cannot see this on camera very well because it's so soft. Um, 
that's generally the way it kind of works with tutorials with light colors like this it's very difficult for you to see the colors because you have to bear in mind um i have lights shining down on the canvas from above uh, and that's all kind of affecting the color and affecting the camera and all that kind of stuff it's very difficult i don't have expensive cameras in my studio unfortunately they're just too expensive for me um so i tend to use my phone it's a decent quality camera it's a 45 megapixel camera on the phone so it's not bad um but it will do for this it's quite good for tutorials but unfortunately you will always get glare coming from the lights and especially the windows and all that kind of thing it's very difficult to get a, a perfect setting for painting tutorials i find but i try my best okay i'm going to stop at that and i'm going to start going into some yellow so i just need to clean the blue off my brush i'll dip it in my turpentine and give it a good dry on some tissue let this tissue soak that blue out of the brush you could do this once or twice or three times if you like that's pretty good okay i'm going to dampen my brush again go into some cadmium yellow some naples yellow and i'll take a touch of magenta as well now that may seem quite rich so i'll take a touch of white the white knocks it back and it makes it that nice soft pastel sort of a shade you can see even how thin i'm using very thin layers you can see how thin that is look even that bit of green that's on the brush is still from the blue that's fine you can just keep adding color to it magenta naples yellow little cadmium yellow and some white and a touch of thinners a tiny touch of thinners just to soften it slightly now i'm going to go up here with that color now as i go i'm going to start adding extra touches of magenta with some naples yellow just a touch so we have this nice pinky hue down at the bottom you see that beautiful pink we have and i'm going to soften that across into this beautiful kind of pinky mauve color then you'll start to see you get these beautiful shades of color and because we have a bit of pink over here already it will mix nicely without going just kind of a green i will be careful when i get to the top here because that's more of a bluey mauve so I'll be careful up there and I'll add plenty of pink into the mix. So pink, some cadmium yellow, some white. So I'm making this a bit more on the pinky side, okay? Just a little bit more pink. You see that? Now that should then mix into this bluey shade much better. Let's just try it. I'm going to fill in this white area first. Come across into the blue then. Soften that across into your bluey, grey kind of a mauve. Soften it gently. There we go, nice and soft. Um, all what I would say to you is the best advice I can give you is when you're dealing with a blue and a yellow and you don't want them to go green, add a hint of a pink in between. And then they should soften together nicely. So I'm going from the pink into the blue and then I'm going from the pink into the yellow. You see? And that should stop any kind of muddy colors forming on your canvas if you find there's a bit of green starting to show just pick up a little bit of pink whatever you have elizabeth crimson cadmium red anything with a bit of white and just add that little touch of pink over the green and that will neutralize the green again so that's a handy little tip for you there now always put a bit of pink between and you can see now how that's just sort of softening across nicely we don't have any muddy colors or anything like that so i'm pretty happy with that now so far i think now i'll just switch to a slightly smaller brush i'm going to switch to my medium stubby brush nice lovely soft brush look at that and i'm going to just start adding rich yellow down here so i'm going to take some cadmium yellow and i'm going to take a touch of magenta a tiny touch so it's not pure cadmium yellow it's a hint of a kind of a, an orangey rich rich orangey kind of a color let's take a bit more of that and just down in this corner you can see where the sun is coming in i just want a nice warm color down there let me try this nice rich orangey hue there now there that's better i think that's a bit better 
I'm going to just start flicking that across here and there. All right, just flick it across, soften it in. It's just to add a bit of color down in this corner here, that's all. And leave it fade away out to the side then. So that way it feels like it's coming from outside the camera coming into the painting. So you're leading your eye into the painting, you see. Now clean the brush just very quickly. And I'm going to take some cadmium yellow again with a touch of white. Now, if you're good with sunsets, you could actually add the sun. You could put a sun over in the corner if you like. Um, you don't really have to. But if you are fairly confident, you could add a nice little impression of a sun over here as well. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple for today. I'm just going to start working on suggesting those very bright shades. See that little bright colour over in the corner? Um, it looks like the sun kind of catching the cloud, doesn't it, from below the horizon. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and some white. I'm just going to start adding little touches of that over in the corner. Just here, sort of hit and miss sort of a technique, okay? Just a little hit and miss. Dab, 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 dab. Just a little touch of it. And leave it just disappear off. <clears throat> and finally, maybe just pure cadmium yellow on its own. Just dab a bit of it here and there. So, I'm fairly happy with that. Now, if you want to go the extra step and really make an impact with that corner down there, you could use your palette knife. And let's just mix up a little bit of that white with cadmium yellow. And let's just say I want to just add a little bit of texture onto those clothes with the palette knife, just to really catch your eye. You know what I mean? Just to really make it seem like it's very far away, off in the distance. And that's fine, that will do. So that looks more of an impact. Let me just touch the camera here and I'll see if I can sharpen this image just a little. Okay, that should help. Moving on down along here. I'm gonna clean that brush. Just make sure it's nice and clean, all the yellow has gone off this brush. I like using a handful of brushes. I don't like switching between brushes every two minutes and using five or six or seven different brushes. Um, you know, I find a brush I like and I stick with it. It's just the way I am. So I'm just going to clean this brush. I'm going to start putting in a nice deep mauve down here. Let's take some magenta and some phthalo blue. Make a nice mauve, a nice rich mauve, a pinky purpley kind of a mauve. Okay. And I'm going to add to that a touch of black. And the black will just soften it slightly. Then a touch of white. And actually, I could even add a touch of cyan into this as well. That'll just give you a sort of a soft, mauve brown kind of a hue. And I just want to suggest some bits and pieces off in the distance, okay? Now, when I say bits and pieces, that's all I'm suggesting. It could be a tree line. It could be a few buildings. It could be anything. But I'm just being very loose with my brush. Very loose. Because I want it, this is going to be nice and soft. I want to soften this in to the distance. And what's happening is it's picking up little touches of that yellow as well. And it's all just kind of mixing nicely together. See what I mean? You have these just a very simple suggestion of something in the, in the background. Pick up a little bit more of the blue. And we go off over here with that. Soften it. Just at the base, look, soften it in and suggest it could be anything, it could be little bits of buildings, it could be anything. Little tiny trees way off in the distance. And already you have a nice little horizon, don't you? Nice little horizon. 
So I'm going to now start adding more purple. I'm going to go back into my phthalo blue and a little magenta. And I'm going to make it a little bit more on the purpley side. Um, maybe a touch of black actually as well, just to tone it down ever so slightly. And I'm going to just add a second darker layer underneath that. <clears throat> and what this is doing is it's pushing the first layer way back into the distance. You see how immediately this one at the back goes very, very far away, doesn't it? And I love when that happens. It's just a nice, simple, effective way of creating depth in a painting. I'm just going along. Now, as it comes over towards the sun, it's going to get warmer. So what I tend to do is take some extra magenta and a touch of burnt sienna. So now we're going nice and warm with the colours. You see that? And soften them across into that layer. So already we have two nice little layers of colour on our canvas. So I'm going to make this one much thicker. So let's take a bit more Born Sienna and some magenta. This side just here, pop that in. Be very, very loose with this now, all right? Very loose. And then again, it's going to soften over to a more pinky, mauve shade as it goes over to this side here. Take a touch of black. Make a nice dark shade over on this side. Because as it goes away from the sun, it's getting cooler and darker. Um, much, much cooler, let's say. So there. How about that? And then, finally, what I'm going to do is take a small flat brush. Small soft flat brush, just a dry brush, and I'm going to pick up a touch of that black and a touch of the cyanide. Just pick up a bit of that dark colour, and let's just create some shapes of, let's say, a roof or something. It could be anything. Just a suggestion of some buildings off in the distance over there. Soften them away down, um, like this. Look, we could go for make it a square like that. It could be some kind of a tower or a building, anything at all. I'm just suggesting little touches of detail. In the distance and really it's not even detail i'm just adding a bit of interest into the painting that's really all i'm doing a couple of straight lines here and there it just tells you that there's little buildings off in the distance as well you get the idea don't you you see it's just a very loose very very loose kind of a style take a little bit of black pop a little bit of black in there, just dab it around here and there. So you can see straight away, we have the impression of little rooftops. And finally, I'll just take a very small pointy brush. I'm going to just clean my brush now because it's quite hard from previous paint. I have a habit of not cleaning my brushes properly, which is a very bad habit. Um, I admit, it's a very bad habit. And I should. I'm very bold. So let's take a small, tiny, pointy brush. And let's just suggest. Again, it's the impression of detail. That's all. A couple of little vertical lines here and there. Cutting through some of the trees. You see that? And that's just giving you, again, a little bit of interest. Something to look at. Um, you could put in the impression of a couple of sails. Possibly off in the distance there, just popping up into the sky. Um, there could be boats moored over there or something, you know, who knows, it could be anything. It's all just a little bit of impression of detail, that's all it is. It's really just to give you that little bit extra to look at and to kind of help draw your eye into the scene. That's really all it is.
So I think that kind of, I think that works, doesn't it? You see, just by do doing those few tiny steps, we have already given the impression of a lot of detail. Um, but there's not actually that much detail in the painting, really. I'm just taking some black look, put a couple of vertical lines here and there, a couple of squiggles as well, and that all just adds to the effect of detail, the illusion that you're painting detail, but it's not. So when someone looks at this, they think you know, that somebody spent a very long time sitting down, putting in all these little impressions, but you didn't, really. It's just a lot of swipes with the brush and there we are that's kind of pretty much our background and horizon finished isn't that lovely so i'm going to show you a nice little trick i'm going to clean my medium brush you can use a small brush if you like i'm going to show you a nice little trick now for this to create that lovely soft misty feeling that we have off in the distance isn't that lovely and sorry about that in fact Throughout the painting, you have this lovely mist, don't you? Let's create that lovely mist. I'm going to take some white. I'll take some cadmium yellow. And I'll take a touch of burnt cyanide. And this needs to be nice and rich, a nice rich colour, okay? With this, let me just start putting in little swirls like this look I'm just going along the bottom and I'm pushing the swirls gently just along the bottom of that and I'm going to come down just a little bit first and then I'm going to go up very carefully just up into that color you see I'm going to soften it upwards here and there and so you can see now what's happening. I'm kind of combining the two colours ever so gently now, and I'm hardly touching the canvas. I'm only barely touching the canvas with the tip of my brush. Create these lovely swirls. Isn't that lovely now? And it gives you that beautiful, soft, misty feeling away off in the distance. As it comes across, again, it's going to start getting cooler. So if you look at the photograph, you can see we have a lot of rich yellow down this side. It's all kind of yellows. As it comes across, then it softens into pinky colours and soft, cool colours. So let's just take a touch of magenta into that mix that we just made. And a tiny, tiny touch of blue. Very small, small touch of blue. I'm then going to go with that colour. And soften this across into the yellow very gently and go up into the black look, up into that dark browny, blacky, pinky colour, soften it all along. Now you could even go right up if you like, look, and create a very misty feeling here and there. So this is giving the impression that there's a lovely sort of a fog rolling across the land and the water off in the distance. It gives that lovely impression. I'll take a touch more blue and a touch more pink. With a touch of white. I'm just going to put that sort of a nice soft blue as well across here. Touch more pink as it comes across in the yellow. Remember, it's the very same principle. When you're going from a, a mauve colour into a yellow, just take an extra touch of pink into your mix. And then look, just soften it into the yellow, where you go, and soften it over into the blue. So now we have pretty much that section done. I'm going to clean my brush. And from here on, it's basically just filling, just filling in all the way down. So I'm firstly going to start with some Naples yellow, some cadmium yellow. A touch of magenta and I'm going to just simply fill in over here now I need to mix a good bit of this because we have a big area to fill in so let me get some plenty of paint cadmium yellow little magenta and a touch of white you could even use a touch of Naples yellow if you like as well and let's just simply 
fill this in. For the only reason, just to cover the canvas, that's all. Um, as it comes across, I'm going to just make it slightly more pinky. And I do tend to use thin layers, all right? I like using thin layers early on, and you can always strengthen those and add to those as you need. I'll just soften across here as well. And let's bring it on down. Let's take some more cadmium yellow, some more magenta. Realistically, we've only used probably four colors so far, haven't we? If you think about it. Let's just fill this in. Again, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow. I'm going to go nice and rich on this side up here. I'm going to add plenty of cadmium yellow up there. You see that very rich, rich cadmium yellow we have there. It's really jumping off, isn't it? Jumping off of the canvas, just along here. And I'll go back then to my softer colour. Over here. So some magenta, touch of thalo blue. That thalo blue is very, very rich, isn't it? It takes a tiny bit really to cover a lot. And that little bit of a pinky color down here. Again, remember, you're going from a yellow into a softer color. So just add plenty of pink into it, look. Plenty of magenta. That will help soften the colors right back. Now I do need some Naples yellow on my palette. So we're almost really, we're almost finished part one of this. Um, part two is going to be just painting the boats and reflections. So I, I think this is coming on quite nice. I, I made it quite simple. I tried to make it as simple as I could for you. Not too much fussy detail or technique, just a nice, simple, easy to paint picture. I, I think it is. Um, so look, I have the basis of that painted. Nice and soft, lovely soft colours. Um, I will start making some parts slightly richer. I'm going to go for, I'm going to take, for, for example, let me just get this magenta out of the way. It's all over my brush. I'm going to take some magenta and some cadmium yellow and I'm just going to put a very rich color across here. I'm going to rich, I'm going to rich in that area there. I want to make that nice and rich and I want it to really stand out on the canvas. So I'm taking some cadmium yellow with a touch of magenta again, and I'm just going to really add lots of that just there. And you can, by the way, use your palette knife as well for a lot of this, if you like. If you like using your palette knife, getting lots of thick color on a painting, absolutely. Just grab your palette knife and put lots of thick paint on here. Um, so one last thing I want to do, I want to go back and just sort of add a little bit of a more misty feeling up here. I'm going to take some magenta with some white. I just want to add little bit of a light sort of a pinky mist going across here um, making it more ref not more softer but making it stand out a little bit more do you understand what I mean so I'm just kind of pulling on my brush strokes I'm not softening them in too much I want to leave those kind of swirls creating that sort of a mist and as it comes down then just Soften it away. I'm 
I think that's a bit nicer now, isn't it? Even go up into that area just a little. I think that's a nice sort of soft, misty feeling going across the canvas. I'm going to do what I was saying earlier about the palette knife. I'm going to grab my palette knife. Let me just get some cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to grab a palette knife, get some cadmium yellow, and a touch of white perhaps. And I just want to add a real nice glow over here on the right hand side. I think it needs it over here, doesn't it? You see, just stick it on with your palette knife. Don't be too fussy about it all. Just go on, scratch it across. And you could even go with some of this orangey hue as well. Just take some of that warmer color, mix it in with your yellow. Just scratch it onto your canvas. And that's just really putting plenty of paint on the canvas. That's all I'm doing. So we have a nice little scene. Um, I think it looks quite nice so far, doesn't it? I think what I'll do with my palette knife as well, as we have it, I'm just going to take some burnt umber, a little black. And I'm going to add just a suggestion of one or two big sails up here. Um, it's just something I want to do as I have my palette knife anyway. We're going to be doing it later, I suppose, so why not just do it now while we have our palette knife here. Let's create a couple of sails and that kind of thing. Just here and there on the water. A couple of distance, like that. I won't overdo it. <clears throat> But I'm fairly happy with that so far. I think that's quite nice. So what I'm going to do, my friends, is I'm going to call this part one finished. I think we just, we won't rush it. Um, I want to come back. I want to leave this dry slightly and come back and do my boats. Lovely boats um, with the very same technique around the boats. Just going around the boats like this, creating little bits of mist here and there as we paint the boats, each one. So... I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, there maybe is one or two that we could do off in the distance while this is wet. So if I take some cyanide and touch a burnt umber, maybe touch a black. So if I do that and pop in the suggestion of, let's say this boat here, With that and you can see it's just sort of disappearing it's softening into the color it's mixing with the color underneath and it's just creating that nice little soft impression now it's only a suggestion of a boat that's all small suggestion I don't want to go too far. A little bit of black just at the back here. Soften it in. Take a touch of cyanide with cadmium yellow as well. And you could just add little touches of light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small, any small flat brush, Take some yellow and I'm just going to go and soften some soft color around the bottom of the boat. Look. Dab, 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 dab. Creating that lovely soft kind of a misty feeling. Which is quite nice. So we have a nice little suggestion of a boat off in the distance. softened down. I'm going to just going to thicken up this mast just a little. Soften it in. And it's just a little impression of one boat off in the distance just kind of softened into the colour. So that's one 
done. It's the same process from here on. But look, my friends, I think we leave it at this for part one. I'm quite happy with that. Um, let me turn the camera here and I will say I'll be back very soon with part two. Nice, simple little boats. Um, just maybe two colours. That's all. So I'm quite happy with that. Nice, simple subject, isn't it? It looks complicated, but as you can see, just by doing a few little techniques, you can make something really soft and misty and mysterious. Just especially going around in little circles with your brush. Just small little circles like this. Even at the bottom of a waterfall with some paint. Um, and you can always use a little soft uh, blender brush or something as well to soften it all out if you like. And it just creates the most beautiful, beautiful pictures. Uh, beautiful, soft, mysterious um, effects, doesn't it? So have a go. Try it. And just try and keep it simple. But more importantly, have fun. Enjoy it. Okay? I'll be right back with part two. Don't go anywhere.